Greetings, everybody. I want to welcome you here to Prog Monster. My name is Murph. I am the host of this show, a show dedicated to progressive rock and other forms of rock music. Just going to take a drink. So I want to welcome you here to Tuesday night, episode of Decades. I do apologize. This is going to be late. Uh, got in late. Made my uh, board up there. Got everything ready, set up, got my props, but couldn't find one of them. So I did what I always do when I can't find something. I remembered that I had it out and was looking at it last night. So I looked in all the possible places it could be. Then I checked all the places, all the impossible places that I didn't think it could be. And then I looked in the insane places that... There's no reason it should be, but it could end up there anywhere. I've seen things, things like back of the toilet, inside the refrigerator, knapsack, all these places that there's no possible way I would put them there. But uh, anyways, the prop has not shown itself, so we are going to have to go on minus one of my props. Hope you can forgive me for it. Um, a little bit of the olds, I guess. So anyways, we're here to do Decades. It's Tuesday night. So for those of you who have been following this series, you know what, what's going to be going on. For those of you who are new, I'm going to explain that now. So Decades is a series that Ben gave me. He's a subscriber and suggested that we do a six-part series in which I do my favorite 10 albums from each of the each of six decades starting in the 1960s, working my way up. So we're now in the 1990s. The 1990s for me is what I call the dead era. This is the era in which I got married, I was traveling a lot, I was doing a lot, and I didn't listen to a lot of new music. In fact, I barely listened to anything really throughout the decade only just the cds and stuff that i already had that i overplayed anyways or the radio that was another popular thing so there were a few new songs but for the most part i didn't spend much time listening to anything new and kind of i would say i was kind of dead to the rock world in some ways um but i'm i came back with a vengeance on this channel most of these albums that we're going to be doing today were albums that um, came about during the uh, three years that we've been doing this channel, and next month will be the third year. So most like I'm looking at the list here, almost all of them came from that era. There are a few that came and during specific time period, and there's a couple of them here that were albums that I listened to during the 1990s. It got into one one in particular, um, and then that's it. So you've got about two or three that had some substantial listening to before the channel started. But most of them have come as a result of this channel, and that just shows you how weak the 1990s were for me. Uh, not that the 1990s were weak, they were probably a good era for music. I don't know. I haven't really gone into it. But because I hadn't gotten into it, there wasn't much for me to sift through. So, But I did pick out 9 or 10 that I like, one of which I can't find. But we're going to get into that now. So that's what we normally do. That's what we're doing for decades. So if you're new, I hope that explanation satisfies you. And I'm going to do it according to the way I always do it, which is rank them from... 10 to number one or least the best or worst the first or whatever you want to call it and we'll start out with the number 10 and i'll give you a couple of honorable mentions at the end as well so the number 10 for me comes from one of my favorite bands yeah they put out about i think they had about five or six albums in the decade but this was the only one that i both liked the cover and really liked the album i didn't over love it but I did like it quite a bit, and that's the latter from Yes. This is definitely a good album. It does have a little bit of John Anderson feel to it, like, like a solo album from John Anderson. But it does have some Yes stuff sounding too. There's a couple of 
different people on the album that added a little bit of a flavor to it as well. The album cover, of course, is Roger Dean. Another great cover. I like. I do like this one quite a bit, this cover. Almost a spirally type thing. But John Anderson sounds good here. The band sounds pretty good. Some of the tracks are great. Some not so great. But overall, a pretty solid album. Good enough to make my top 10 in a week decade. A week decade for me, that is. So the next album up is from another band that I like a lot. One of my group of nine now. And that's Pink Floyd, The Division Bell. I, I know that this album takes a little bit of heat from Pink Floyd fans and people in general. Um, citing, and Roger Waters specifically, citing this as being weakly written, not great lyrically, and all kinds of things about it. But the music is good, I think. This is very Floydish in all the Floydish things that I like the guitar, the vocals, the um, uh, kind of uh, deeper stuff. Um, but really, not a bad album. It, um, I like it a little better than the Yes Ladder album just because it has a lot of really good instrumentation and solid guitar playing by David Gilmore on here. So, yeah, and I do like the cover as well. The back cover is good as well. Excellent album, Division Bell, coming in at number nine. Okay, number eight. This is a band that I like a lot, but I never really liked much of the stuff they did in the 90s. However, I did like this album. I do like some of the tracks on here quite a bit, which is Get a Grip from uh, Aerosmith. Eat, eat the... Eat the Rich, good song. Get a get a grip. I like that. Um, most of the stuff here is pretty strong. Um, there are a little bit too many um, kind of poppy or sappy kind of ballads on here, but the songs that are up tempo are decent by their by this standard by this time period. Um, yeah, this is one of the two that I don't mind from the '90s. This one I like the best of them though. So get a grip from Aerosmith number eight. Number seven is, uh, yeah, that was the other thing I didn't say. I will not do more than two albums per band. The reason I'm saying that is because this next band has a couple. And this one had to be in here. I mean, it's got a little bit of a break. It was part of the fall not too long ago. And this is Rush's Test for Echo. Strong, pretty strong album. Just gonna fix it because it's out of place now that it had that crack. Everything's kind of moved around a bit. I didn't even notice this until I started to show it off here. Anyways, uh, definitely need a new car, a new uh, insert for it. It's not gonna stay. Anyways, test for echo from Rush. Uh, the first four tracks really good. The title track exceptional. Rest of the album is a little bit mediocre, but not bad. Not bad at all. Now we're going to move into uh, number six. And uh, seems to not be here for some reason. Oh yeah, sorry, I was mixed up. Number six is going to be Neil Young Sleeps With Angels. This is a good, solid Neil Young and Crazy Horse album. Um, lots of heavy stuff, but also some tame stuff as well. Of course, the stories are always good on Neil Young albums. Most of them. Sleep with Angels, a great tune. Um, Piece of Crap, of course. We all know that's the kind of outlying, funny uh, take on um, the environmental shit that goes on in the world. So anyways, uh, yeah, a good album. I like it. It's solid. Of the Neil Young albums... From that time period, I like it the best. There's a two others that I like as well, but that one's the one I like the best. Next up is Return for Ronnie James Dio to Black Sabbath, Dehumanizer. It's an album I discovered on the channel. Well, I didn't discover it. I knew of it, but I didn't listen to it until I got... This is a really strong album. Um, given a little more time, it's going to move up a bit. But for today, I'm putting it in this spot. There's some really heavy stuff on this album. And Dio sounds fantastic. 
I wish they could have done even more, but I guess we were lucky to get a third album by this group of people. Absolutely fantastic. Um, Time Machine, I like that a lot. I, yeah, just some really good heavy uh, Black Sabbath stuff. And so Dehumanizer gets the nod for the fifth spot. Now the fourth spot was the album that I misplaced and do not know. I'm still looking, kind of looking for it here and while I'm doing it. I don't know where I put it, but I know I was looking at it yesterday because I wasn't quite sure if it was a 90s release or not because I'm still exploring this band. They have some more, I have some more of their discs. I just found this album really great. Lots of fantastic sounds to it. Of course, I'm talking about the Tea Party's Edge of Edge of Twilight. I, this was my initial break into this band and I really liked it a lot and it did very well for me. I liked some of the songs. I loved that Indian sound. I loved the clarity of thought. I loved the guy's vocals. Everything about it I liked. But it just didn't translate into any of the other albums yet. I'm not sure why that's come about. Um, I, I will probably give them another try. But this album definitely a top four album for me from... 1990s so number three another rush album counter parts yeah counterparts i never remember this title even when i'm looking at it i don't remember it and i don't even understand why i don't remember it should be obvious by now great album we did do a um look back at a classic rock album on this last night so it's getting a little bit more of a feel tonight great album good enough to face number three here um, something I discovered uh, maybe back around the birth of my daughter. Played it a little bit when I was starting to get right back into Rush with uh, the Snakes and Arrows album. It reintroduced me to them along with um, along with this album. So those were the two. And then I got went back and got everything. So now I own all of the albums. But this one is a really strong, heavy album. Lots of really catchy riffs and guitars if you want to see more about this album you can go back and watch the episode from last night but number three here today rush's counterparts so the top two i think were pretty pretty easily the top two um this one anderson bruford wakeman and Howe, self-titled should have been a yes album if you could add chris squire on this would have been a yes album but really strong album this was the one that um, I got right after I came back from New Zealand and I played this a ton. It was easily my favorite album from the 90s for the longest time. It's kind of moved down a little bit um, over time, but the longest running album for me of all of the ones that we've done today, as far as my getting into and listening to, absolutely killer. My favorite song on there, Teak Boise, love it, fantastic. Then we have the number one one, which is this one, Peter Gabriel's Us. This is a great album. I love just about everything on it. I wished he had done more of what he did on this album on his next two, but you know, I'll take this. Every song on it is really good. This would be a favorite album no matter what decade it was in, I think. Easily my favorite here. Come Talk To Me, great song. Love To Be Loved, great song. Blood of Eden, great song. Steam, fantastic uh, kind of hit song. Uh, wash, uh, Only Us is okay. Waters, uh, Washing of the Waters, that's okay too. Digging in the Dirt, of course, I think is the big hit on this album. And definitely my probably my favorite on the album. 14 Black Paintings is okay. And Kiss the Frog and Secret World, the last two tracks. Absolutely killer way to end. Kiss the Frog, fantastic song. Secret World, very underrated, maybe the maybe the outlier on the album. So I do love this album a lot. Um, I still play it a lot when I get a chance. I play it fairly regularly. It's probably the Gabriel album I go to the most now. Um, so yeah, number one, Peter Gabriel's Us, or US, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to give you, um, just going to redo the uh, albums now so that i uh, put them in the order. And uh, then I'll give you a couple of outliers as well, so I don't need my glasses. For that. So the number one one, Peter Gabriel's Us, 
Number two, Anderson Bruford, Wakeman and Howe, self-titled album. I think, uh, I think that one's from 1990 and the Gabriel album from 92. Um, Counterparts from Rush, this is from 93, that's number three. Number four is The Tea Party, that's The Edge of Twilight. I'm not quite sure what year it was. Um, I did look it up, but I can't remember right now. Black Sabbath's Dehumanizer, I think that's 92. That comes in at number five. Number six, Sleeps with Angels from Neil Young and Crazy Horse, and I don't remember the year for it. Uh, Rush's Test for Echo, that was 96, I believe. That comes in at number seven. Number eight, Get a Grip from Aerosmith. I think that's 92 or maybe 93, and I can't make it out, but I think it's one of those two. Pink Floyd, number nine. Division Bell, this one was 94. And last but not least, The Ladder from Yes. Um, I want to say this was towards the end of the decade. It might even been the last year, 99. I think it was 99, actually. The good thing about this one is that there was about six Yes albums that came out that year. I own them all. One of them's in my list waiting its turn in the... Actually, two of them are in the list waiting their turns to get into my playlist. And I do like the Gates, uh, Gates to Ascension, both of them, quite a bit. And uh, there's a couple that are kind of a little bit on the weak side. That Talk album, that's not really me. And the, uh, the other one is the one with no uh, Roger Dean on the cover. Just a big blurb that's, yeah. No thanks. I, I didn't really like that one, so it's, uh, it might get some airplay. I'll try to give it a little more of a chance when I can. Anyways, there you have it. That's the decade of the 1990s, my favorite 10 albums from the 1990s here on Decades. This will come out, uh, I have to go, I will upload it as soon as it's done. So it's going to be about an hour or so late. I do apologize for that. But I hope you enjoyed the episode nevertheless. And if you did, please hit the like and subscribe. That's much appreciated. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next episode of Decades. And any comments about any of the albums, you can put those in the albums things. And I promise you, if we do this in five, six years, there'll probably be a ton of albums in the 90s as I'm really starting to explore that decade now. Anyways, take care. Have a good night. From Prog Monster, goodbye.